There's always something going on at the Performing Arts Center here on campus. And this spring season, we have the opportunity to see some of Shakespeare's finest ladies in When Shakespeare Ladies Meet. Hello and welcome to Brookdale Newsmakers. I'm your host, Sophia Parola. And here to talk with me about the play is the director and head of the theater department, John Buckebeck. Hi, John. How you doing? I'm OK, Sophia. How are you? I'm very good. I'm good. so excited for today's show. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, we're very glad to have you here. So can you tell me a little bit about When Shakespeare Ladies Meet? A little bit about it. Well, if you were to take six of Shakespeare's major female heroines and put them in a room together out of the context of the shows that they actually came from and talking to each other, and they are all there to give Juliet love advice. And when you know the characters, you have Kate from Taming of the Shrew, you have Cleopatra from Antony and Cleopatra, you have Desdemona from Othello, you have Ophelia from Hamlet, and you have Portia from uh, Merchant of Venice. All of those characters have a very different experience and perspective on love and what happens with their love life in each story. So they come together to talk to Juliet and speak to Juliet to her impending love, i.e. Romeo. Romeo. So I know a lot of people probably know Romeo and Juliet, but for those who aren't familiar with Shakespeare's cast and female her heroines, heroines, yes, can they still enjoy the show? Do you think it's good for everyone? I think so. It's. Um, I know you have the word on there. Shakespeare talks, so I'll just get to it. <laughs> uh, the majority of the show is not in Shakespeare's language, meaning it is not in 16th century English language. It is in contemporary, modern day language. Technically, I guess you would say that because it was written in 1942. So it is contemporary language. There are quotes from all the different plays. So yes, you do have a smattering of Shakespeare's famous quotes, things that most people will remember when they hear them because uh, even if they're not from the show, they, they, they just go, oh, I know that quote. I've heard that mm -hmm. before. I've heard that before. But anyone could understand it. It's love. Anyone can understand it. This is true. So you guys do a straight play every spring semester, correct? Correct. And why would you say that this play is different than the others? Is it it's different than ones you've done in the past? Different than the other dramas or comedies that we've done? Different than other straight plays you've done in the past, yeah. Um, it's different because, first of all, it's a tra in, mm, historically it's a, what's called a traditional one act, meaning it's about 35 minutes long. Uh, today, most one acts are either 5 to 15 minutes long, one act plays, 10 minute plays, they call them. This is more in the vein of when uh, writers like Tennessee Williams and Charles George and all these different playwrights were writing one acts that truly covered um, a, a 30 to 45 minute time frame to get their point across. It's, it's different from that perspective because I rarely do something that is just a one act play mm -hmm. when I do the, uh, the drama or the comedy. And at the same time, it's one that's been on a tick list for me for a long time. It's one I've, I've known for uh, almost 30 years I've known this play yeah. and I've never done it. And I just decided that after we do all these other things, like we're doing Pippin this year, so Pippin is a very popular big musical. So I said, you know what, I want to do something small and nice and simple and uh, get back to a, uh, a rehearsal and show experience that are sometimes hard to come by. So you've just covered why you chose this play personally, right? Yeah, I, I, I've always loved the play. I actually had a, a, a professor in my undergraduate program that uh, would always talk about this character and would always talk about the, well, this playwright, I should say. And he introduced me to the play, and he kind of never got to do it because he had passed away before um, we, had, I, we had finished, I had finished college with him. And, uh, and it just always sat there, and it was just one of those plays that you really need six very strong women to play these roles, and they have to fully commit, and they have to want to be there, and they have to want to sort of play the way I like to play. Mm -hmm. And all those things finally came together. Ooh, well, that's good to know. So um, can you tell us when and where is this play playing? So we open on February 9th, right? Yeah, 9, 10, and 11. That's a uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then the following Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which I can't do the math off the top of my head because I'm an actor, mm -hmm. sorry, um, <laughs> the next weekend. But Fridays and Saturdays are at 8 o'clock, and Sundays are at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It is 
at the PAC, but different than usual. Usually in the PAC, we do most of our shows in the main theater, which is the, uh, the auditorium. Uh, that seats 306 people, so there's a lot different. It's a proscenium theater. This is in what we call the experimental theater. The experimental theater is the teaching classroom, if you will. Uh, it's a small black box theater, and we will create a stage in there. It's done in the round, and it has limited seating, relatively speaking. So we're looking at probably somewhere between 80 and 100 people um, being able to sit in the house and watch it. And it's a nice different experience because if you've never seen theater outside of what most people would consider the standard, I, you know, when you sit in the theater and the show's up there and you're out here, mm -hmm. you're all around this. So there's, it's a very intimate setting mm -hmm. I, I, and works for I think what we're talking about. Exactly, that's a perfect way to say it. I was thinking very intimate. So how much are tickets and where can students get them or anybody? Tickets are $5 a piece for students. I think it's 10 for um, non-students. It's, uh, you can get them at the box office. You can, uh, the box office is open regularly during the day, I believe from 10 o'clock till at least four o'clock or so in the afternoon. I hope I know they're going to put the graphic up with the phone yep, number because they have the number I've only right worked now, here I for 20 so. years and I couldn't tell you the phone number. I know it's bad. I should have a little sheet in front of me. Um, but I, I, I just don't, I don't know it off the top of my head. But you can call the box office and reserve and you don't have to pay for them. You can call, leave a message and say, I want two tickets for such and such a performance. And as long as you did that and you show up on that day, they should have those tickets reserved for you. Oh. And then you have to pay. But you know, And $5 is easy. Yes. And it's worth it, I would say. I would say it's definitely worth it. Um, mm -hmm. It's odd, you know, we do student productions and you fight all the time about should you charge or should you not charge and I think people get scared when you say something's for free because they say what's wrong with it. Mm. <laughs> um, but here, um, you know, five dollars is just a minimal charge for what we're putting up. And we are a non-profit organization. Yes, we are a non-profit organization. Yes, so we're giving back to the PAC. We're giving back to Brookdale. Okay. Well, Brookdale. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to us about what takes for Lady Thank you. It's you. been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> so I hope to see you guys in the audience because, surprise, I'm actually one of the members in the cast. So to find out more about when Shakespeare ladies meet and future events at the Performing Arts Center, please visit our website at brookdalecc.edu slash PAC. Thank you so much for watching Brookdale Television, and we'll see you next time.